Welcome to module three, which is focused on developing work-life resilience. And boy, that seems ambitious right now um, in the COVID-19 crisis, doesn't it? Um, one of the concepts that we introduce in this module is around historical range of variability. So the idea that just like ecology, we all have you know a range of things that we can tolerate on a regular basis and I think it's fair to say that everyone is existing outside of our baseline right now. And so um, wherever you are on the map, um, it's completely appropriate that as you're approaching this module, you might not be thinking about those strategies that just help you increase the amount of things that you can tolerate on a regular basis. You might be thinking about, you know, how can I stay motivated today? Um, or, you know, how do I function today? Um, and so the definition of resilience might be completely different for you. And I would encourage you to approach the activities in this module through that lens, even though I think what we were trying to do was help postdocs function as part of their everyday postdoc life. Right now, everyday postdoc life um, and everyday life for everyone is affected by the pandemic. Um, and so I'm just curious, what strategies you might have to suggest to some of our postdocs that are taking this course now? There are a lot of different ways in which I've connected with people that it's been a long time since I've connected with. And I think that's been really important for me. Um, last week, for example, was a really difficult week um, with family stuff. And I think we're all, as you mentioned, Sarah, um, experiencing things that maybe normally would have been you know, stressful and then in this situation are just even that much more heightened. And being able to connect with, um, with my mom, with my cousins, with aunts and uncles, um, and really foster that sense of support and community, um, even though we're really far away uh, from each other was really, really important. And I think I've been doing the same thing with friends, people that I haven't spoken to in, in months or sometimes even years, You know, establishing that sense of community again has been really, really crucial for me. And I think another piece has been uh, branching out in my local community. So there are a lot of mutual aid groups that are springing up. And those mutual aid groups are really important um, at allowing a sense of, you know, it, it feels a little bit um, like there are too many things going on right now. And it feels like we a little bit helpless, like we can't help. But knowing that there are resources um, that are providing emotional support or that are providing monetary aid or grocery deliveries for people who can't do that um, and fostering that um, sense of community locally um, has been huge for me. And knowing that if I ever fall in hard times, that I have these local resources to um, fall back on. The pandemic interrupted a lot of sort of important family traditions and like community traditions for me. So I wasn't able to see um, my family for Passover, for example. Um, I'm in a different city than my folks. I'm not sheltering in place with my partner. Um, my parents have my cat. So finding ways to, as Juan Pablo said, reach out to communities that I already have access to, um, you know, friends from high school, even who I've been chatting with. Um, and then also there are a lot of places online where I've started to build community. So science Twitter has been really <laughs> important for me over the past couple of years. I feel like there are a lot of people and friends that I know there all over the world. And so um, in that sense, finding community beyond just the like literal four walls of my bedroom that I'm in 24 seven <laughs> has been really helpful. Um, the other thing that I've been trying to do is like really give myself a high five for everything that I do accomplish, even if it's like, you know, I made my bed this morning, I did laundry, like I succeeded in something and it may not have been earth shaking research getting done, but I am like continuing to function and continuing to contribute to my own personal well-being and, and in a hopeful eventual sense, you know, getting things done for the larger community will be good. Yeah, I, I want to just say I've become more resilient by changing my wardrobe, so I'm embracing working from home. <laughs> Um, but I've also got into playing games with people. I got invited to other game rooms, so it's been kind of fun. I would have probably never have done this outside of my normal day-to-day -day life, but I met new people. And uh, even Saturday, I did some work at the uh, local church pantry and was brave and delivered uh, groceries to um, a few uh, elderly people who couldn't get out. 
And so it's also embracing and becoming resilient of the fear that we have about the pandemic and how we need to still try to help and be um, uh, uh, show humanitarian uh, 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 humanism and really like, you know, be kind to people. And how do you do that in this type of environment where we're supposedly socially distant? And so the, the resilience is learning how to balance it all and still be kind of welcoming and friendly. And, um, you know, and as a result, I met new people and I've also been, again, built community and also helped others. And, and to add, I think it's important to, to build or to try out those new skills or things that you put off for years, right? I think that's really a great opportunity. Like this situation, you know, you can find those opportunities. You, you just have to not be afraid and take advantage of those, right? And, and take advantage of this time to try out those new things, whether that's a new skill or a new habit. Um, you know, for me, I've been doing yoga very regularly with my wife. We never did yoga before the pandemic, right? So it's been really great to be able to try and incorporate some of these new norms, so to speak. Yeah, and the barrier to entry is super low. If you're like in your room, nobody yeah. can see you fall over. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the on the topic of games, I've been playing way more Dungeons and Dragons than I ever did before the pandemic. So if you've <laughs> ever been curious about Dungeons and Dragons and want to try it, now is the perfect time to get into D D. Wow. I yeah. have always been. <laughs> you can put yourself out there. I feel like we're all doing it. It's all you know, so it takes even away the fear of trying, you know, someone um, uh, stereotyping you or making you feel a certain way, you know, just, just, just try it because we're all in the same and there's no judgment because we're all in the same predicament in this together, as they would say. So it's a great opportunity to learn something new. But also, I think um, post-stocking can be kind of lonely, especially if you're not somebody who's, you know, has a long-term partner and you're moving a whole bunch. And so it's okay also to like, feel like you don't have a community or you don't know exactly how to get these things. You don't have to get up every day and bake a loaf of sourdough and, you know, deliver groceries to your elderly neighbors and do yoga and also do like, you know, it's okay to just exist. Um, and just existing is also sometimes resilient and important um, and, you know, worth celebrating as well. Mm -hmm.